Hello and welcome to part one of a three-part series titled uh, Headwater Mountain. So part one is block in and I go through step by step of how to cover this 12 by 16 canvas in value colors. So I concentrate not so much on trees and snow and sky but I concentrate on just shapes and putting a value color inside that shape. So try to turn your brain off from uh, detail right now. And concentrate on how to balance your canvas, your 12 by 16, with the shapes that should be in the right place, with the right value. Now, I don't think the value I put on today is my final value, but it's a good basic start of where my darks and lights are going to be. So, uh, some people start with gray. Uh, I start with the actual color, um, you know, greens and, and warms and uh, grays. So, um, that's how I proceed in start in part one. And I explain how I do that step by step. So, get out the side and paint, paint with your friends, get critiques. And uh, my job is to throw these different uh, paintings at you every week and challenge you and give you the solutions on how to solve some of these problems. All right, with that, let's get to painting. All right, bye-bye. Hello, here we are at part one of Headwater Mountain, a brand new painting. And uh, this is over by Telluride, Colorado. And... Um, I think it's between Telluride and Lizard Head Pass. And uh, this I've never painted before. I've often wanted to do it. I like the softness on the top um, with the clouds coming over the mountain with that kind of ominous look. And um, so I just think it might make a good subject. I don't know if these trees on the lower left are going to help this. So I'm going to uh, blotch out the road and uh, just work with the uh, mountain there. Okay, so with that, I will get started with block in. So we're gonna cover this whole canvas in the next 30 minutes with value color. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna start with uh, some sort of figuring out where the shapes are gonna be on this uh, canvas. So I'm gonna use a little bit of blue, a little bit of transparent oxide red, a little bit of gray, a little bit more blue. Yes, I clean my palette. It's so pretty and white. Looks nice. So I Making a thin mixture, I added some Gamsol to this mixture to uh, figure out figure out where these shapes should be on my canvas. And I'm going to have trees in here. This is going to be dark. I'm trying to just, at this point of the game, just try to figure out where things are going to be on my canvas and not get too much into detail right now. I try to get some imagination because I'm moving these trees away from the lower left or reducing them and trying to figure out some sort of a design of what to do with these, oh, I think these trees down here would be really important to have. 
There's these different meadows that I think are important. This could go a little bit different here. And I'll put trees a little bit lower down in here. Well, I think that is a good starting point on all this. I think I need to make this guy a little wider and more <clears throat> robust. So I'm going to move him here and here. So I get that sense when I get back, and if something's striking me that you know, looks too thin or something like that, I'm going to make that change, which I just did that. I'm lucky to have a studio where I can get back, you know, I think 20 some feet and take a look at my painting. And it gives me a good perspective. I think this guy might be a little need of lowering. Maybe right in there. Okay. Now that I've got the shapes worked out, I'm going to start getting some value in here. Color value. Color value is nothing more than color and value. Every color can be dark or light. And that's the value part of color. One thing I've learned about landscape painting is that has a lot to do with grays, gray greens, gray grays of every sort can be found in nature. And that's what we're going to be working on today. So let's start working on a value color. Our very first would be a green. So let's go blue and uh, yellow ochre. Burnt sienna or raw sienna if you don't have Uh, yellow ochre. Ultra blue. This is raw sienna. Raw sienna. And I'm going to add a little Hansa yellow deep. Hansa yellow deep. I'm going to add a little bit more blue on one side. And more Naples on the other side. I'm thinking I basically have three main parts of this painting that are really dark, dark, kind of a blue, and then these greens, and then this warmer color here in the area where there's no, no trees. We'll see if these three things can help us out on that journey. Okay, so let's start with, uh, looks like a number six Rosemary Classic Filbert, right here. And I'm starting with the, the green. Just a touch of Gamsol. Could add a little bit more blue in there in Naples. Just love these abstract shapes that I find in nature.
think I have some more of this, maybe on this side also. Some, but not a whole lot. And I have some down in here too. But now I'm going to go to the darker side and put these darks over on this side. I know there's snow fields and so forth, and we can get to that. And this guy has some darkness too. Particularly on the upper side. And everything gets a little faded here at the top. And now, let's get some lower trees. I'll go some blue. Get some uh, good sienna back. Good, raw sienna. Raw sienna. I interchange this sometimes with uh, yellow ochre for making my greens, bold greens. It's a little bit more on the brown side. Let's get these trees up in front now. I'm not, not making them as tall as it shows here in the reference. Just want more of a story of this coming coming down this way. And I'm putting some of these darks into foreground trees too. switch over to the lighter color now. So with that, I'm going to put a little bit of Gamsol in my lighter mixture, <clears throat> which was basically having the warmer color in it. It's a little too green. I think I need a little bit more yellow in this. So I'm adding more Naples. Boy, I needed a lot more than I made, didn't I? This seems to be my story. I never make enough product. And, whoop, I need to go lighter down there. you to see is there's going to be a difference between these darker and lighter mixtures. If it's running and it all looks the same, then you need to kind of step back and make one darker and one lighter. Okay, that's what I'm going to do is step back right now. And so far, so good. And I'm thinking maybe these foreground trees do need to go higher. And I will work on that, if not now, off camera. All right, now we have this nice soft thing coming down from the sky here. And we're going to have to do something about that. So let's do a few. One hill that's a little higher than the rest. 
And let's do that. I forgot to tell you, what am I working on today? It looks like a 12 by 16. 12 by 16, yeah. Good. It's not my normal surface that I'm working on. Mike, my canvas supplier, um, is out of product. Actually, glued it, glue it onto the gator board. So this is a store-bought thing, you know, stretch canvas, typical stuff you find anywhere. Um, with a gesso something or other put on there. Okay, let me pick this stuff up. And it looks like a lot, but it's not. So I have a little bit of dark, I have a little bit of light. And I'm making sure I have a clean palette because I'm really switching over to a lighter value. And if I'm going to use the same brush, I better really clean it out well. But, for safety's sake, I'm going to change to a different brush. One more little cleaning and we will be done with that. See, I really squeeze it out. Alright, I'm switching over to a number six long flat. But it's been used so much, it's starting to look like a filbert. Which typically happens. So, let's work on a mixture. Here is white and a little bit of ice blue by Richardson. <clears throat> it's a really, really light gray. Ice blue by Richardson. And this looks just perfect on the palette, but you never quite know until you get it up on the canvas. bit of camsole. Just a touch. Spring has come to Colorado, but you really wouldn't know it some days. But today I really know it. It's really nice and sunny, and there's no wind. We have had so much wind. See how I'm bringing this down? I'll show you another fun technique here, just a second, to soften these upper edges. And I will do that next. I like how that cloud creeps down this side of the mountain here. So um, what I do is just get a large, flat, soft brush. This is a just a number 10 pro stroke, and you just bring it down and clean it every time. You can see how it softens the edges. to get that soft effect now by <clears throat> cleaning it after every stroke with your uh, paper towel eliminates that getting some of this darker color up into the sky and as I can see the this foreground mountain oh, I got some contamination just like I was preaching to you guys about 
All right, how's my time? Because I think I need to do a few more changes. I've got a shape change I need to fix. And I will work on that right now. Let's see if I have the correct brush. I need something with a little bit of stiffness to it. And I'm going through my library of brushes here and see what I can do. Here's one. I think it's a number 10 Da Vinci. Looks like it's a flat. And I'm going to go back into my darks. And I'm going to move, first of all, let me move this over a little bit more. And that means I'll have to move this guy up a little bit too. And that will bring this mountain over a little bit. And I'll have to bring my some darks up over here. Why I don't see these all the time is because I'm just not taking the time to step back and take a look. So I'm making my changes now. And then up here are all these beautiful little designs. And then I need to have some more lights over in here too. And that causes me to have to make some changes with my trees. I have to a little bit more yellow in this mixture, tree mixture. Okay, I think that's getting me in the right neighborhood. And the changes are made. So, if you step back and you see a shape change you need to do, get it done. It's easier to do it now than later. Because we'll have a lot more paint that we're going to put on in uh, part two. But as you can see, it's, don't get too involved in detail. Just try to figure out where these major shapes are going to be. And work on trying to get the best color value in there. So, what I will probably do off camera is fine tune some of these tree designs I have and work them out. I have a lot of white canvas sneaking through, and I'll probably be covering that up also. So, work on your design, make sure your shapes are in the right place, and cover it with value color. Tomorrow, we will work on balance. We will get darker, lighter. We'll be doing that with the process of mixing uh, heavier and um, you know putting more product on the canvas. All right, enough of part one block in, and I'll see you tomorrow in part two.